Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study manual for T's 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You are going to need it. Today, we will continue the topic that we began yesterday, the topic of proportions. We did some practice problems yesterday that you, that you will find on page number 168. Today we are going to do the practice problems that appear on page number 169. Please turn to it. Page 169, number 1. But before we get going, and before I forget it, if at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com or by visiting my website kashwaniprep.com Let's look at number one. There are five problems there on the page. We are on number one on page number 169. It says that someone works 27 hours in three weeks. The question is how many hours will they work in nine weeks at this rate? Well, let's take a look at it. We are told we are told that they work 27 hours in three weeks. We are not interested in how many hours they work in three weeks. We want to know how many hours they will work in nine weeks which happens to be the multiple of 3. Just multiply both sides by 3, that's all. Multiply both sides by 3 and we'll have our answer. Here we'll have our 9 weeks and here we will know how many hours they work. 7 times 3 is 21, 1 carry 2, that's 6 and 2, there you go. They will work 81 hours in 9 weeks. They will want work a grand total of 81 hours in 9 weeks. Let's take a look at number 2. In number two, apparently, we are making some sales call. It says the company has found that, oh sorry, it says the success rate for a salesperson, the success rate for salesperson is two out of 11. For every 11 calls he makes, he manages to find two suckers. The question is, at this rate, at this rate, how, much, how many successes he will have out of 55 calls? This is the success rate is 2 out of 11. The question is how many out of 55? How many successes can we expect to have out of 55? Well, I wrote, I wrote this on the size on purpose so that I don't have to rewrite this thing. But there you go, it's the same thing as before. It's a multiple, it's a 55. I hope you are able to see that 55 is a multiple of 11. We're not interested in how many successes we have out of, we're not interested in knowing how many successes we have, have out of 11 calls. We want to know how many successes we'll have out of 50, 55 calls. How many cells are we going to make out of 55 calls? Well, that's very simple. Multiply both by 5 and we'll have our answer. There we go. So now it tells us that we expect to have, we can expect to have 10 successes out of 55, which is exactly what we were looking for. How many out of 55? The answer is 10. We'll have 10 successes. We, we shouldn't say we will we shouldn't say we will have 10 successes. We should expect to have 10, 10 successes. Expect to have 10 successes if you were to make 11 calls. These are telemarketing that we're talking that I'm talking about. And they are defining the success, as, as I said before, as finding a sucker. Number three. It says that we are going to have four defective parts out of every 1000. So we are apparently making some something in the factory uh, 
television apparently be making is that it's a factory that makes television and their their experience have shown them, their past experience have shown them that out of every 1,000 televisions that rolls off the assembly line, four are defective. The question simply is, if we know that our, uh, that's the rate, our question is, how many out of 95? Maybe that's how many they make in a day, maybe that's how many they make in a week or a month, whatever the period happens to be, they want to find out for a run of 95,000 television that comes out of factory, how many can we expect to find uh, defective that, that the customer will have a problem with? So let's see. Again, the same thing. We know, we know that 1,000 has four defective. That's because they tell us that. It says there are four defective out of every 1,000. Again, we're not interested in knowing how many defectives we can expect to find out of 1,000. We want to find out how many defective television we can expect to find out of a batch of 95,000. Well, it's very simple. Just multiply both sides by 95. And we will have our answer. And we will have our answer. So this tells us that out of, out of a batch of 95,000 television that we produce, we can expect to have 95 times 4. And if you have trouble multiplying it like this, 95 times 4, just do it out on the side. But you shouldn't have to do this much. There's a quicker way. Do you know what 100 times 4 is? 100 times 4 is 400, obviously. We're not multiplying by 100, we're multiplying by 95, which is 5 less than 100. And 5 times 4 is 20. So if 100 times 4 had been 400, 95 times 4 should be, 4, should be 20 less than that, should be 380. Let's find out. 5 times 4 is 20, 2 carry. A 20 is 0, carry 2, 9 fourths are 36, and plus 2 is 38. There you go. The answer is 38. Out of every, out of every 95,000 television that rolls off the assembly line in this factory, we can expect to have about 380 defective ones. Let's do the next one. Number 4. Number 4. We are told that one centimeter equals 75 miles. Apparently we are looking at a map. It says on the map the scale is one centimeter equals 75 miles. The question is, if we are looking at two cities, if you are looking at two cities on the map, which happen to be 8.6 .6 centimeter apart, how many miles is that? How many miles apart are they in reality, in actuality, if they appear to be 8.6 centimeters apart? I'm, I'm just turning my page because we did a problem very similar to this one yesterday. Very similar, very similar to this one yesterday. Uh, the very first one on page 168, we did that yesterday. It's always important that you watch this video in proper sequence. Do you understand? Just don't go all over, uh, all, all over the place. Uh, be organized. Be systematic, be methodical, do you understand? And when I say be organized, I don't mean to have as much organization skill as a bunch of chickens running around the farm with their heads cut off. That is not the sort of organization we're looking for. Let's take a number four. Again, it's 8.6 centimeter we're looking for. We know one centimeter equals 75 miles. We are not interested in knowing how many miles is represented by one centimeter. We want to find out how many miles are represented by 8.6 centimeters. Well, again, straightforward. Just take that equation and multiply both sides by 8.6 and you're done. 8.6, 8.6, there you go. Now 8.6 times 1 is 8.6 obviously. And now we can figure out 8.6 centimeters represents how many miles? It apparently represents 75 times 8, 75 times 8.6 miles. Now before you jump into this thing, before you jump into this thing, you must always, you must always, always, always in this exam, as you're doing the problem, 
must keep an eye on the answer choices because answer choices have a great deal of information. Answer choices tell you how much work they expect you to put in it, the people who write the exam. The nature of the answer choices will dictate how much time you should put into it, how much time that you actually put into it, it depends on you. Let's take a look at the answer choices. The answer choices are 8.7 66.4, 82.6, and 645. As you can see, they are ridiculous. They are ludicrous. They are insane. They are so insane because you see, it's like it's like a lineup for the crime. If a crime has been committed and the police well, brings you to identify somebody in a lineup of four people, the person who is guilty, they're not they're not going to make him obvious. They're not going to make him conspicuous. They make it obvious. Here's the here's the guilty guy. There's the guilty guy. Because what are the odds? What 75 75 times 2, just 2, 75 times 2 is 150. So what are the odds that 75 times 8 would be 8.7? Or it would be some you multiply 75 by 8 and all of a sudden the answer is less than 75. Or it's just a little bit more than 75. It's just silly. That's the guilty guy. I hope the police don't do a job like that where the guilty guy is just too obvious. You know, uh, she tells you that the guilty guy, the guy who did this thing to me, had a beard and uh, had a tattoo on the neck, and they bring four guys, and three of them are clean shaven, no tattoos, and only one of them has a. Obviously, it's stupid. That's it. Now, just to satisfy your curiosity, I'm going to do now the work which is not required. Had it been a real exam, I wouldn't do it. But just to satisfy your curiosity, we'll do the work to show you that. This this guy is indeed guilty. Let's do the work, shall we? So listen to me. Let's erase this part so I can have the room. Let's erase this part. We're trying to figure out 75 times 86. I hope that you're able to see that 100 times 8.6, 100 times 8.6, whatever that quantity is, if you were to take that 100, 100 times 8.6, you just multiply by two digits, one and two, it's going to be 860. 100 times 8.6260. So let's write down 860. Let's write down 860 here. And remember that that represents, that 860 represents 100 times 8.6. Again, one more time, I'm just telling you, this is not insanity we should engage in during the real exam. Do you understand? Get all the insanity out of your system at home. So, if you take half of that, half of 800 is 400 and half of 60 is 30. And what do you suppose 430 represents? If 860 represents 100 times 8.6, 430 must represent 50 times 8.6 because it's half of it. Now, if you take the half of that again, this is 215, half of 400 is 200, half of 30 is 15, and same thing here, 215. If 430, if 430 represents 50, 8.6, 215 must represent 25, 8.6. You see that? There you go. We have our, we have our 25, 8.6. We have our 50, 8.6. Which means if we were to add these two numbers, this guy and that guy, we should have 75, 8.6. I wonder what we will get when we add these two figures. I don't know about you. But the suspense is absolutely killing me. Let's find out, shall we? 430 and 215. Notice how miraculously the result here lines up with that one. That is a miracle. 5, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. Oh my god, look at that. I'm getting goosebumps. That was number four. There is one more. There is one more on the page number, page, uh, question number five, which we're not going to do today because I ran out of room on my page and I didn't do number five. So we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, we'll pick up from there and then we'll also do a couple of extra problems, maybe two or three extra problems just to get some more exercise for you out of uh, T's five. T's five book. I didn't bring it in this room and I, when I walked in here I wasn't thinking. But T's five book, which I'll show you in the next video, which actually came out in 2012, and I realized it is more than eight years old. 
but as, as I've explained to you several times, math is math. Math does not go out of fashion. So if you want to get some more practice on my channel, you will find solution to every single problem that appeared in that book, these five. Just search for Keshwani. Always type in my name, Keshwani. These five, day one. That's where the series begins. As you can see, there are 80 videos in this series. And on that, in that series of 80 videos, I solved every single problem that appears in T's 5 in 2012. Tomorrow when we meet, we'll, fin do we'll do problem number 5 that is left over. And then perhaps we'll do a couple, two or three problems from the, from the T's 5 just to get some more practice. Alright? If you want to get hold of me, you can always send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.